that's your world. Um, is it Jesus or is it something else? And there are so many different things that light or switch on people um, other than Jesus Christ, but we, we will find out that perhaps through this message that there is only one thing that can truly light up our lives. And I pray that through this message, you and I will find that light and be drawn to that light, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd ask you if you're turning your Bibles to John, the fir first chapter. It's the Gospel of John. John chapter 1. <clears throat> And our reading is verses 1 through 5, and we're going to be looking at that during the course of the message. We're going to look at each little section and see how that relates to us uh, pertaining this wonderful light that will light our worlds. The prophet said in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Isn't that amazing? They will see. The prophet spoke about this. The, 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 the prophet Isaiah spoke about this and revealing that one day they would see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, the light will shine. Are we living in a land of darkness? I think we are. I think if we look at the world today, there's so much darkness in the world today that, that, that we need a light somewhere to point us in the right direction. When one walks, when one talks about light, we have to also consider the opposite of that. And that's why I mentioned the darkness, because we have to also talk about darkness. And we don't have to go into great detail just to know that we are living in dark times. Light and darkness are recurring themes throughout John's Gospel. He talks about the, the, that, uh, the, the comparison between the light of Christ and the darkness that surrounds humanity. So God is light. In him there is no darkness. This is the message that we heard from Jesus and now I declare to you that God is light. There is no darkness in him at all, John wrote. No darkness whatsoever is found in Jesus. Satan is the power of darkness. He is the one that brings darkness into the world. And so when we see the darkness that's going on in the world, recognize its origin. Its origin is is the enemy of Christ, is the enemy of you and I that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, we thank you this morning that you are the light. And I pray that through this message you would speak to us, reveal the marvelous light deep down into our hearts today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus says, why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, and the time and uh, the moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. Jesus spoke about the darkness even in his time. How dark it was during Rome's occupation that they came and arrested an innocent man, accused him of all sorts of different things, and had him crucified. In our reading this morning, it's probably one of the summits of Scripture. Uh, and you hear me say that virtually every Sunday. Well, this is the pinnacle of Scripture. Or this is the summit of Scripture. Well, there's so many summits, and just like a mountain range, we look at these beautiful passages, and we get encouraged as we find God's Word. In fact, it is probably reaches the highest of human thought when we think of what John wrote about in these passages, in these few verses. In that Jesus, the Son of God, is the height of all human thought. People have thought about all sorts of things. But when we narrow it down and we really focus in that Jesus is the pinnacle, the very height of human thought, that Jesus is literally the Word of God, that Jesus Christ is the very creator of life, that Jesus is the being and essence of life, that He keeps life going. Without Christ, we would have no life. These three truths, very deep, and, they, and, and we have to delve deep into this passage to really get the depth of what the writer was saying. A quick reading of the passage doesn't even come close for us to fully grasp and understand what John was trying to say. And the importance of these truths lie at the very foundation of our faith itself. Without this truth, without these truths, we would have no foundation. They cannot be overstated because they determine our destiny. They determine man's destiny. Man at large. These few verses determine their destiny. If Jesus is the Word of God, then people must hear and understand that Word. Without understanding the Word of God, how will we ever come to know Him? Or they will forever be in ignorance about God Himself unless we understand the Word of God. 
Who is the Word of God? And we're going to look at that. It's not just simply the Bible. It's more than that. Christ is eternal. He lives forever. He's always been there. He is the Creator. He is the life. He is the light. And we consider who Jesus really is. In our passage, the word Logos is Jesus Christ. He is the very living Word of God. The, the, the breathe, the, 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 the Christ incarnate that we celebrate at Christmas time. And we should be throughout the year. In the New Testament, most Gentiles, those were the non-Jews, never heard that the Messiah or the Savior was expected. But only the Jewish people were expecting a Messiah. The idea was foreign to the Gentiles. Yet the Messiah is the very center of Christianity. It is the very center of our faith, our relationship with Christ. How was John going to convey this message that Jesus was the Word? And how was it to be understood by both Jew and Gentile? How were people to understand this, this relationship, this correlation between the Word? The Jews saw the Word as something much more than a mere sound. It was something active and existing. Words possessed the power to express something and to do something. They were active words to the Jewish people. This is seen in many Old Testament passages where the Word of God was seen as the very creative power of God. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So the Word literally spoke, and God spoke something into existence. There was an act of, there was something behind the, just the Word. We see the Word being spoken throughout of God, God's creative week. The psalmist spoke of God's creative Word when he wrote in the 33rd Psalm, and he said this, the Lord merely spoke, and the heavens were created. He breathed the word, and all the stars were born. Wow! He just said it, and it came into being. There was a creative power in, in, in the power of God's spoken word, much more than just communication. On the other hand, the Greeks or the Gentiles saw the word more philosophically. It was the power that, that brought light to man's understanding, enabled him to express thoughts and to, in, 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 and to get one's thoughts in an orderly fashion. They didn't see the Word as being creative. They saw the Word as the power that enabled man to think and to reason. Nothing more than that. But John took these common thoughts of, 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 of the Gentile philosophy and also the Jewish philosophy, and he tied them together in the person of Jesus. God had given us much more than just words found in the Bible. He gave us Jesus Christ, the very Word. Jesus Christ was the Word of God who came down to earth in human flesh to bring man into a face-to-face -face relationship with God. Isn't that amazing? He is the one that revealed God incarnate. He was God incarnate. Our words reveal to others where our hearts are. How do we communicate? How do we live our lives in the way that we, you and I live our lives? The Word communicates to others, and it reveals the heart and mind that we have in our lives. Jesus is God's last Word to mankind. He is the apex of divine revelation. There is nothing higher than Christ's coming being the light of the world. Jesus is the mind, the reason, the power that both made and keeps all things in their, pep, in, in their proper place. Without Christ, the world would unravel much quicker than it is right now. He is the one who's giving us an opportunity, is giving mankind an opportunity still to come to know Him. Jesus is eternal. In the beginning, the Bible says, was the Word. The Word already existed. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. As we look at those first two initial verses, when John begins his gospel, he, God has always been there. Jesus has always been there. In these two verses, we find three profound statements made about Jesus, about this Word that John writes about, that He was pre-existent. He's always been before this world was even created. Jesus was there before creation. He's always existed. He didn't become, nor was He created. He never had a beginning. He was there with God from the outset. He's always been this Jesus whom we love and serve today. Jesus answered and He said this in John 8, I tell you the truth, before Abraham was even born, look what He says, I am. And when we use those words, he used the Old Testament 
where God revealed himself, when God said, who should I say? And he said, the I am. The Alpha and the Omega, the very beginning and the end. Christ was also coexistent always from the beginning. He was there face to face with God forever. Look what he says in John 17. Now, Father, bring me into the glory that we shared before the world began. In his high priestly prayer. Bring me into that glory, Father, that we shared before the world was even created. He's always been Christ is also self-existent. He was the Word. The, the Word the word was God, the Bible says. He's always been God. It's not that He became God. He's always been God. The second person of the triunity that we believe and that we pray to. When we see Jesus Christ, we see a distinct person who is in the very substance and character of God in all His perfect being. That's hard to understand. We worship one God who demonstrates himself in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I fully don't fully understand it. All I have to do is read what the Scripture says. The writer of Hebrews clearly describes this for us. And he says, The Son, this Jesus, radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Speaking of Jesus, he is the one who holds it all together. And when he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. He intercedes for you and I on a consistent basis. All the time, he is our mediator. The Apostle Paul confirms the saying when he says in Colossians chapter 1, he says, Christ is the invisible image of the invisible, is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Do we believe that? Church, do you believe that this morning? For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in the human body. In Christ, all the fullness of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is found in Jesus. Secondly, Christ is the creator. God created everything through him. And nothing was created except through him, we read in verse 3. He was there. So when you read in Genesis 1, when God created, that was Jesus. When He created, He spoke the world into existence. Every element, everything, each being, each person, every material or spiritual, angelic or human, has come into being through Christ. Wow. Everything. Every element. When you look at the periodic table, remember in high school when you learned that? Those of you that had science in high school. Um, you learned that, that every element on that periodic table, Jesus created from nothing. Wow, what an awesome God we serve. In Colossians, Paul writes and he says, For through him God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made all things that we can see and the things that we can't see such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. Wow. I, I want you to get an understanding how majestic Jesus is, how amazing Christ is, that he is the one who came to give his life, that you and I can know him in a real way. In the God that Jesus Christ is the active agent, the person who made all things, all things, Here's the critical point for us. That the world is God's. He made it and everything, every element in it was made by Him. Every single person was made by Him. This means that God isn't some, in some distant galaxy somewhere and, and that He's not involved in us. But it shows us that He's not far removed from the earth, but He's intimately involved in the affairs of mankind and in the affairs of the world. Godly, God deeply cares about the world that he created. After all, he made it. It was his idea. Even to the most minute detail, God is involved. And so don't think that God doesn't know what's going on in your life. He knows every minute detail that you think might not be important. It is important to him. That's how amazing you are to him. The problems of the world are not due to God or his indifference or his attitude. Not at all. The problems of the world are due to sin, due to the attitude and the evil of man's heart. 
And again, how does the darkness come? From the enemy. He lays it before us and man falls for his lies. The answer to the world's problems isn't man's technical skills or proudness. It is Jesus Christ. He is the answer to everything that we have. It is for mankind to turn to him, to surrender to him, and give him their lives. Just like what we sang about this morning. To give him in the most personal and intimate way possible. Lord, I give myself to you. There's nothing that I hold back. Every thought, everything about me, my entire being, everything that is me, everything that I own, every, everything that I hope to be, my past, my present, and my future, Jesus, I give to you. We have nothing more to give to him but ourselves. Only if, as mankind does this, can their lives and the world be set in order. Can we be the world or the people that God intends us to be? in total surrender to him. And thirdly, I love this, Christ is the life and the light. He is the one that has shone his light into our lives. In John verses, uh, 1 verses 4 and 5, it says, The word gave life to everything that was created, and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. If we could just get this, if we could just understand it, he gave life to everything and light to everyone. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness will never extinguish it. No matter how dark it may seem around us, it, the light of Jesus will never, ever, ever be extinguished. John, in these two verses, summarized his incarnation when Christ came. And that's what we celebrate. That's what we should light the first candle, the candle representing Christ's life coming to us. Christ is the embodiment of life, the glorious eternal light of heaven that left heaven and came and shone his light into the dark world that you and I live in, the sin-drenched world. Christ is the very source of light. Without him, there is darkness. Jesus is the illumination. He came. His power penetrates the darkness of our world. You, we can dim all the lights in here and have one candle going, and one candle light would expel darkness. Isn't that amazing? You and I are the light. Christ has shone his light into our lives. You and I should be the ones to expel the darkness around us. We should walk as children of light and walk in his light. He is the life. He is the light of the world. His life and light are what make sense of the world and enables us to understand what God has in store and what God's intention for the world is. We read in the 8th chapter, verse 12, where Jesus said, and he spoke, to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. What a declaration to the people who were in darkness. He says, I am the light of the world. Jesus himself. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. If we walk in the light, in Christ's light, we will have life. Without walking in his light, we won't have life. In fact, nothing can exist without light. No plants, no animals, nothing would be able to survive without light, physical light. And spiritually speaking, nothing can survive without the light of Christ. If we don't have the light of Jesus shining in our lives, we will not survive. We will be separated from God for all eternity. People who don't know Jesus in a personal way will be separated from him for all eternity and be shunned into outer darkness. And the Bible says, where there will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. That is a very serious thing to know the light of Christ and to walk in it. From the very beginning, the life of Christ was to be, be the very true light of people. That life, Zoe literally refers to spiritual life as, as opposed to bios being the physical life. So we speak about the Zoe life the Zoe life that, that you and I experience when, when the Spirit of God comes and lives within us. Life is the key theme, as we spoke. It is used 36 times throughout John's Gospel. By the Holy Spirit, He gives us His breath of life. He says in John chapter 20, He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
And we know that as he did this, he was speaking a command to, to them and saying, receive the Holy Spirit. And then when Acts chapter 2 happened, what we know, how the Spirit of God descended and filled each and every single believer. The life, Jesus. Jesus himself was the light of man's purpose. He gives the one who gives us meaning. He gives us a destination. He gives us purpose in life to fulfill his call on our lives. John was writing that that life and light cannot be separated. That we cannot have life apart from light. We cannot have light apart from light. Because they were, they were, they, it's, it's almost like cogs in a machine. They have to work together. And essentially they're the same. The idea of light emphasizing the manifestation of divine life that God has given to us. The life was the light. And the same construction the, as the word was with God as we see that. The life was Christ. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief's purpose, that's the enemy, is to steal, kill, and destroy, but my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Christ came to give us that kind of life. But only as we walk in his light can we experience that. That purpose, that, that, that blessedness. Those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are the very sons of light. We read in the 12th chapter of John where Jesus said, My light will shine for you in, um, just a little longer. Walk in the light while you can so that darkness will not overtake you. And he says, Those who walk in darkness cannot see where they're going. Put your trust in the light while there is still time and then you will become the children of light. Where do we put our trust? What is your trust in? What are you hoping for? Is it the light of Christ or is it something else? Whatever that might be. And you can fill in the blank there because some of us have got other things other than the light of Jesus. Christ is the answer to darkness because people have brought darkness into the world through sin. The life of Jesus was the light of humanity. It is the beam that showed people the way, the truth, and the life. He is the one that shines the path before us. Jesus showed mankind the way that God intended them to live. He is the one who reveals how we ought to live. You don't know how to live? Look at the life of Jesus. Look at his teachings. He will instruct us. He shows us. He showed us that he is the truth of life. The truth about God can be found only in the light of Christ. Jesus showed mankind the life, how to save his life, how to come to a, a living relationship with him, only through Jesus Christ. Jesus said in, in, in John 12, I have come as light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. Christ came to be the light. That we don't have to be in the darkness of sin. We don't have to be in the darkness of pessimism. We don't have to be in the darkness of negativity. We don't have to be in the darkness of a sin-riddled world. We can walk in the light in this world. The Bible also says that we are what? Children of light. You and I that know Him as Lord and Savior. The darkness doesn't understand the light. It will never overcome the light, nor can it ever extinguish the light as we began this morning. Nothing can extinguish the light. Despite Satan's frantic, furious assault on the light, darkness will never overcome it. No matter how hard he tries, because he's a deceiver and he'll try lie to humanity, he'll try lie about all sorts of things. Only Jesus is the light of the world. The brilliant, glorious light of the Lord Jesus Christ will utterly destroy Satan's realm of darkness. Wow! One day, when Christ comes again, the enemy will be bound and his light will shine brightly. We look forward to that day. And since Jesus came into the world, the darkness is passing away because the true light is already shining. It says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 8, For the darkness is disappearing and the true light is already shining. Christ's light is already there. Where do we find Christ's light? In the person sitting next to you that knows Jesus. In people that confess Christ as Lord and Savior, there is light. And you and I are, one, are the ones, Jesus said, we are the light of the world because he's shone his light into us. And we don't cover that light. Jesus gave us parables talking about that. We don't put the light under the bed. We don't put it under a basket. But let our light shine brightly for him. 
So this morning I want to ask you, what lights your world? Is it Jesus? Is He lighting your world? Have you put aside all the other bad stuff, the darkness that would press in and try quench the light in your, of your life? Because the enemy would want to do that in the worst way, to get rid of the light that you have. And he'll do that through every, every kind of attack on your life. You've got to stand in the light and be in the light. Is there someone or something other than Jesus, his light in your life? that you're focusing on rather than him? Is it the negativity? Is it the things of the world? Is it, what is it that Christ is calling you and I to this morning? I believe that Jesus is, is inviting you and I to find a genuine fulfilling purpose, to come and find life through him and walk in his light. That's what Christ calls us to. But I love the fact that he's a perfect gentleman, the Spirit of God is. That he doesn't force his way into your life or my life. But he invites us to come into his light. His glorious light. And may this season that you and I find ourselves in, this first Advent, when we think about the light that Christ has brought into the world,